homesteading in Montana in the nice beautiful grasslands and high peak mountains seems like a tr dream come true doesn't it most people in the mid 1800s would say yes let's go why were people so eager to go because the eastern part of the United States was being overcrowded and over farmed so the government to help solve this problem under President Abraham Lincoln established the Free Homestead Act in 1862. The act was simple. You go into a government office, file for a 160 acre claim, and as long as you build a home, cultivate land for five years on your claim, it would be yours at no cost. Good deal. It sounds like you should take advantage of it. Well, many settlers did in the late 1800s and early 1900s, but only half of the settlers made it. Times got very tough for lots of families. Today, there are still great-grandchildren who work these homesteads. Some sold out. Okay, so this is the Homestead Act of 1862. And all this act says is that each person that comes over from the east over here to the west, if they want a homestead, they'll get 160 acres. And all they would have to do is prove up on it and keep it in good shape, and then they would just be able to keep it after five years. Okay, so this is Nebraska. Um, even though it's a different state, it's the same exact act that Montana has about the 160 acres and this right here the little blue dot right here is 160 acres and after it was given this would be the 160 acres and after the person who owns the 160 acres would die it would be left to its children and you'd have to split it up and they soon would just split it up and it just keeps splitting it up until there's not that much land left. Pretty soon there would be only about a couple acres to each child. This is Abraham Lincoln. He was the one that passed the Homestead Act in 1862. And these are just homesteaders. And the homesteaders would come in this wagon, and that's all they would bring was what would fit in that wagon. These are homesteaders branding one of their cows. This was done so that homesteaders' initials or brand was on the cow they owned, so people knew who owned it. This is a photo of a family on their homestead ranch. This may give some ideas of how things may have looked or been set up on the average ranch. This is a woman plowing her field. Notice that they didn't have machines and equipment that we have nowadays, so she was getting pulled by her horses. This is a family standing in front of what looks like a little shack, but it's actually their home. They lived in houses that were 12 feet by 9 feet. There's three people living here. Homesteaders came during the homesteading boom in 1906 through 1918. 100,000 Dutch, Greek, and Irish came. They came from Eastern United States. This picture is telling you about what they ate. They ate chicken for food. Um, it's showing you they rode in a normal basic horse carriage. And they use the shovels for a lot of their work. This picture is about a man doing field work on a plow 
um, while he's plowing the field. They didn't have tractors or any other truck materials to use, so that's what he used. Um, they did it for a living. Um, this is the house homesteaders lived in. Um, it's your pretty normal, basic, average size house they lived in. They're all really small. They made houses out of bricks, mud, and hill houses. And the hill houses, you actually have to dig in to make a living out of there. Um, this is your normal wood house they used. Hello, my topic is on the roles of the Montana Railroad and how they affected its citizens. This train right here was one of the very first trains that entered Montana. It entered in 1881, 26th of December in Butte. These trains right here, this is an old time cattle train. Of course you can't see it that well so I've added in its newer version and it's in color so you should be able to get a better glimpse of it. These helped lower the cost of transportation of goods and cattle tremendously because the ranchers did not have to drive their cattle so far and risk the chances of losing them. The transportation costs alone, just transporting the goods, usually costed more than the goods themselves. Not only did the trains help ranchers and homesteaders, it also helped the mining industry. This right here is an old time line. It's hauling at what looks to be, it's probably coal. This right here is its newer version. This is hauling coal as well. These um, helped the mining industry by shipping in their heavy machinery and shipping out their ores. Uh, without these trains, most life, uh, homesteading, mining, much of everything in Montana would have been either very expensive or impossible. Alright, so today I'm going to be talking about the theory of the rain follows the plow. Uh, the theory was developed by a cowboy whose name is unspecified, but uh, he thought that the immense amount of dust that gets kicked up when you're plowing gets above the Earth's atmosphere, hits a precip precipitation cloud, bursting it open, making it rain. Um, he started a religion based on plows. He said they were a gift from God that separated civilization from savagery. He also believed that a plow can convert any desert into a farm or garden. Alright, so I'm going to draw you a diagram of how this guy thought. Here's him. Here's him plowing. Here's all the dust that gets caught up. He believed that that dust go above the Earth's atmosphere into precipitation clouds. And his theory was that once the dust would hit the clouds, that the clouds would burst open, pouring down rain, resulting in fresh green crops. Nineteen nineteen was one of the biggest droughts in Montana. This caused all the crops to wither and die. In nineteen nineteen it rained less than four inches. In two thousand eleven in eastern Montana it rained about sixteen inches. Six inches should be the average rainfall. Eighteen eighty six had one of the harshest winters in Montana. It stayed in the negative thirties with winds up to twenty miles per hour. People often froze to death near their houses. The snow stayed on the ground and became ice. It started in November and ended halfway through the summer. Animals died because they couldn't get to the grass and most cattle industries ended. The painting called Last of 5,000 by famous Montana artist Charlie Russell shows that a cow star is starving and being stalked by its predators. Before 1855, the Salish, Kootenai, and Ponderay tribes owned over 20 million acres of land. In the Helgate Treaty of 1855, 
almost all the land was ceded and tribes were put on reservations for exclusively for them. The government wanted to homestead to improve the land and open the res to whites. They drew 6,000 names to live there, but when they were drawn, there was many left over and the government declared a land grab. Indians were given the choice to either keep 80 or 160 acres to themselves. On this map, the orange is the Indian allotments. But upset, many did not claim their allotments and they lost a significant amount of land to homesteaders in the way. Today, the tribes are slowly buying back land with money put aside each year and they've gained over 60% back today with significant amount of lands bought back in this area.